Does that mean we're old if we're legends? <laughs> <laughs> Some days I feel it. Well, this is a talk. Um, well, uh, g'day, everyone. Uh, Kellen Fran, I'm Kelvin, she's Fran. Okay, got it. Um, first joke went down well, you laughed. <laughs> um, finding your ministry grew. Let's goo it, baby. <laughs> And activating your state of life. Yes, this talk is for you if you are married and a couple or if you're working in a close ministry with others or if you're kind of working in partnership in close... That's, hopefully it's going to relate to everybody, but the principles, we've identified eight from our experience. And I think this is going to pull out the experience of our corporate community lives as well because we've got a lot, as you're saying, Fiona, we... I think we've got a lot to offer the church and a lot of the wisdom in this talk is from our corporate experience with you guys, you know. Um, so I, I think it's, but the talk is primarily for married couples, to be honest. Um, but, we did, and there was going to be a talk about single life afterwards, but we're going to adapt it for, for anyone in, like, close, small, not big ministries, but small ones like music ministry or a small Brotherhood, Sisterhood House, um, etc. Um, all right. Hi, Lynn. Um, Fran and I uh, would like to dedicate uh, this session, this talk, uh, to in memory of Frank Tui and, and Lynn, who is here with us now. Um, So, some of you already know that today, Frank and Lynn married 50 years ago. 50 years ago. It's outstanding that Lynn chose to come and celebrate that day or that memory of that day with, with us. It would have been much easier for her to stay home, uh, although she was encouraged by her children <laughs> to come to this weekend and so Lynn thank you for coming. We, we met um, Lynn and Frank uh, just over 30 years ago when they fell in love with the Holy Spirit at one of our Little Life in the Spirit seminars at Peakhurst Parish, Our Lady of Fatima and they fell in love with the Holy Spirit and with us and we with them and um, I could say with all confidence that for Sydney South they were the saintly couple. Not a saintly couple, but they were the saintly couple. And I, and I would say all the people that have gone through Sydney South would have agreed with that. Um, we all modelled our marriages on, on their marriage, their parenting on their parenting. I benefited person, uh, per, um, personally as well. So, Lynn, thank you for being here. And we know that we're very confident Frank is with the Lord in heaven and he has the Father's ear. And he's speaking to him right now even and, and praying and interceding for you and for all of us. So on that note, it's a note of, of joy because he lived a great life. We have another saint in heaven along with Cole Sutton and others who have gone ahead of us. So the community is not just on earth. The body of Christ is also in heaven. And so we join them with, in a special way today. Um, on to a... Um, thanks, Nick. Oh, can you see how good looking I am there? <laughs> Doesn't matter about me. Can you see how good looking Fran is? Can we darken these lights? No, 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 kidding. We've, um, that was just to say um, we, we were young ones. And for, for many years now, um, 30, uh, three and a half years, <laughs> we, we've, um, we've been, even before we got married, we were doing ministry as singles. Uh, and it's been a great joy and delight. Um, so what we've done in um, developing this talk, we actually um, prayed and dialogued about what we'd learnt about ministering as a couple. And as Kel said, hopefully as we talk, you can reflect whether you're single, consecrated, whatever, you can reflect in your own life and how these principles or things that we've learnt, how um, they are expressed in your own life. 
So the first thing that we came up with is I before us. And I think this is really quite, um, it's really what the Holy Spirit wants to say because I felt when Tim was talking about entering a place of worship and he was saying enter, you know, entering that place of worship and really you know, going into the heart of God and then ministering, you know, you, you, your works flow out of that place. And that was exactly what I had already written about my first, about this first point. So I said, before I can minister to anybody else, I must have a deep and intimate relationship with my Father in heaven. I must know myself as a daughter who is totally loved and accepted. I must know my God who loved me into being. My God who has loved me even when I've turned from him. My God who watches my every move. Who is my merciful Father whoever, even when I fail, will leave the 99 and come and get me. He's the father who is waiting at the gate and when I return, he runs out to embrace me. It's a daily conversion grounded in prayer and a sacramental life and that is our first place we must start if we want to do any sort of ministry at all, a place where we know ourselves in the father's heart. Um... As Kel said, we were ministering. I actually experienced um, outpouring the Holy Spirit when I was 19, um, many years ago. And the week, more or less within two weeks, um, we were a very young, dynamic community. And I was only 19, a lot of people only 20, 22. And we started ministering straight away. So we're put into all sorts of roles of outreach and um, sharing group leaders and pastoral care. And what, looking back, what I realised is I really lacked a time of proper formation, a, a, a time of really um, getting to know the Father and developing a really strong prayer life. And so what happened is in the next, over the next 10 or 15 years, I had two mindsets developed in me that I, it took um, a, long, a long time for me to realise that the mindsets had developed and I think that they easily can creep in. And the first mindset is that we can do things because we want to please God. And, it's, and that's true in one way. We do want to, you know, we do want to please God. But we shouldn't be acting out of people pleasing or pleasing God only. We've got to come from a place that we've experienced the Father's love. And I think that this is really at the heart of the whole charismatic renewal that has flown through the church is that we come from a place that we've experienced the Father's heart. And because the Father is all about creating about giving that we experience that love and we can't help but want to go out we want can't help and but want to give so I had to really repent of a real people pleasing spirit I had to really repent of um, doing things out of wanting to be loved and accepted and I had to turn from that but the way the way the Lord did that with me I had to actually draw away from ministry completely to come into a place where I wasn't ministering so I could refine the father's heart it took a number of years for me to find that and then my ministry since then has come from a very different place. And the other second uh, mindset which was wrong that had developed in me in the early days of community, we had very, um, I've got to be careful what I say, we had some very strong teaching about headship and submission and people who were in community in those early days can relate to that. And as a young woman in community, I grew up in, with a mindset that if people had discerned that I should be involved in something, you know, they're the elders, they're the leaders, they know... I should be obedient to that. And so I grew up with this mindset and my husband being my husband who I'd been taught should be in headship over me as well as my area leader, whenever things were being asked of me, I was doing them. And again, it was a mindset I had to drop. And I had realised that at the, at the foundation of it, there was some, some wrong teaching and some wrong formation for me. And so what I had to do is again come back and realise that firstly and foremostly, I'm answerable to God the Father. That's my first place. And it's only out of that place, only out of that place can I minister, only out of that place can I love, only out of that place can I join with brothers and sisters and do whatever God's calling me to do. Yeah. I mean, ditto for... um, I mean, that's for men and women, what Fran said. Us men need to be whole in our relationship with Christ, otherwise it can be a performance thing. Another, add another layer or dimension on, on top of that relationship with God. Um, I don't know if you can see there, that's my son Peter reaching out to me uh, when he was only a little baby. Um, a man, this is a little bit uh, just for guys, um, 
A boy receives his masculinity from his father. A man, a man receives, you know, that, that love, that intensity, that strength, that sense of protection from his dad. As much as I love my dad, um, I didn't receive everything that I needed for him to equip me for community life. And so that had to be finished off. And so part of our life in community, young men we meet, and older men we meet other men who can model us, who can be models and mentors for us, who can make up what was lacking in our upbringing. And that's relational. It's not, it's not just a spiritual community where flesh and blood. So in the early days, Colin Sutton was like a spiritual father for me and for many, some of you guys, you know. And he, his love and affirmation of me gave me a lot of confidence to lead Sydney South and to lead the youth and to start and lead the youth mission team. I couldn't have done any of it without his backing, saying, you know, smiling at me and saying, it's going all right, you know. Um, in later years, I've, I've re, rethought of this, and we had these original teachings on manhood and brotherhood, which I, I think were really fine. I think we need to revisit them. But lately, I've discovered this book by John Eldridge called Wild at Heart for Men. It's, a, it's an excellent book, men, if you want to buy it. Um, so it doesn't stop the formation and training. We need to continually grow individually. Why are we starting the talk on working together like this? Because it's foundational. If you don't, you end up with this thing called codependency. Let me demonstrate physically. <laughs> now, if I'm, I'm... Oh, yeah. Can you see that cartoon? They're, they're wearing the same jacket. The one jacket around two they're of them. I think their bodies are actually fused together. <laughs> and so they, they've got a bit of an identity crisis. Where do I... It's not a healthy unity. We'll talk about that later. Codependency is probably, just have a look at visually. Now, if I'm, if I'm off balance and I'm sort of relying on friend to tell me how to be a man and, and, and to affirm me in Christ all the time, <laughs> what's that going to make to do with friends? Can I <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be that comfortable for us. Kel and Frank, can you minister to these people today? She has to hook in. It's okay. Let's go and minister to them. <laughs> okay. We're, we're a little bit limited because we're into each other. I'm into her and she's into me and we've got this thing happening in between us that's not resolved and that's distracting us from you. Yeah? That's, so what we're talking about here is important. Know who you are in Christ. Listen to the Lord say, you are my son you are my daughter, and I'm so delighted in you. I so love you. And I will form you and equip you. Then when the two, if you're single and you're looking at marriage, prepare your hearts to be whole before you join because the two will become one. And it's, it's a little bit harder when you're married to develop this. Not impossible because I've, we're still a work in progress, but it's easier when you're single. We move on. So our second point is about um, identifying gifts. Yeah. And again, something that Tim said, to quote Tim, in worship, gifts drop from the Father. Okay, and I, again, I think it must be a word because that's what already what we had put down about identifying our gifts. And um, if we think of Corinthians 1.12, it says, um, to each is given a gift and it talks about wisdom and knowledge and I'm, no, I'm hoping you all know all the gifts of the Holy Spirit that it talks about in Corinthians. The important thing in Corinthians, it doesn't say some will just receive gifts. It actually says everyone receives gifts. Okay, so up there like the pile of presents, there's a present for everyone. It's not like a birthday party where everyone, someone only just gets a gift. Everyone has got gifts. So if you're asked to be a part of a ministry or in a marriage, you're doing any sort of ministry, um, and you think, um, I haven't got any gifts, or I, it's all right for my partner, they're really gifted, and this is, again, something I had to really grow in, because Kel had done years of upfront ministry with youth mission team, and even in prayer ministry, his, his gifts, I've prayed with, a, I had a lot of prayer partners, like male prayer partners, and there's very few men that I, ha I know can pray the way Kel does and has in spiritual insights the way he has. And so I would feel overwhelmed, like overwhelmed with his giftedness and think, oh, what can I do? What can I do? And I had to really, 
again, stand apart and say, no, God has given me gifts, what are the, and discern those and really ask the Lord for those gifts and to really know and stand um, really um, confidently in them. So if you are sitting there and, and you're married and you, particularly and you're thinking, it's okay for my partner, they're really gifted, I'm not, we, we, we call this the shadow effect, okay? And you're not meant to be the shadow. And, but that's actually where Satan would want you to think you are. Satan would want you to stay in the shadow. But what does the Holy Spirit want, want you to do? He would want you to identify your gifts and be raised up in them. And the way the Holy Spirit works in any couple or in any group is very different and the identity of that couple or group is very different. So no one should look at Kel and Fran and think, gee, I want to be, I want to have their gifts and be exactly like them. You're not meant to be, okay? So Kel and Fran is really different to Tom and Lara, who's different to Andrew and Bernadette, who's different to Tom and Kate. So every couple has a unique giftedness that they need to discover and grow in. Likewise, every ministry group or every community, like look around the branches of the community, there's different giftedness in each branch of the community. So we need to identify those and grow in those and never be looking at others or other groups and thinking, gee, we're not like them, why, why not? But really rise up in what we're meant to be. Me next? Yeah. Um, so how do you know what gifts you have? This has been something for years we've been looking at... Um, Oh, can you read that? Okay. Can anyone not read it? I'll, I'll read it to you down the back. It might kill the humour, but it's, at least you'll see it. No? So we... Um, what are our gifts? Um, we Sometimes that leads us to an introspection. Like I know when I heard uh, Tim's um, vision of the, the magpies... Uh, four times outside of his door, outside of his prayer window, pecking and pulling up worms, and and the worm was a gift. What is the gift that we want to pull up from the earth? And what, what are those? We need those eyes to see. And I like the last vision you had, Tim, of the magpie finding the worm and taking it to his mother. Yeah. So I think to take that a little bit further, the best way to discover your gifts is for someone else to actually discover them. Or affirm them. Fiona, what you're saying uh, about that word, the unravelling of the Lazarus bandage. Lazarus could not unwrap himself. Jesus rose him from the dead. So we're not responsible for raising, you know, doing that to each other. Jesus gives life. He's the only one that gives life. But we need to free people up and rec to recognise their gifts. If you're working really closely with someone, they're most likely the one who's going to see it, particularly your partner. Yes, Fran can see all my sins. She can see all my grumpiness. She said a few nice things about me before. She's probably not going to tell you all the other times, you know, when I can be a little bit grumpy at home. And so when she says to me, Kel, that went really well. You know, that talk went really well, you know. Um, I, I, I can receive that. Because if something didn't go well, she would... <laughs> I would know it. And guys, you know, we... We also, sometimes we don't um, affirm our wives. Men don't affirm enough. I think in our community we're, we're streets ahead in that. In that. We're breaking, that, breaking through that cultural problem of Aussie men not being able to affirm. But sometimes, like this guy, you'd probably think, you know, like, you know, well, she knows, she knows what I think of her. Why should I tell her? She knows what I think. You know, she knows I love her. She knows that I'm proud of her. Why should I tell her? No, you, <laughs> that's wrong. We need to. Um, I know Fran's got a really incredible gift of prophecy, which is sharper now. She's, that's okay to say, she's given up alcohol for the purposes of becoming sharp. Well, I tried that and I couldn't. I'd, <laughs> someone comes over and I, I go to the fridge and I pull a beer out. <laughs> I, I, I have tried and I do regularly, but, I've, but it's not about me, it's about Fran. It's a, <laughs> and I can't be like her in that gift. So I've had to, and I, and I still prophesy. But some people are given prophetic gifts which are cut a few cuts above. And I've, pre, I treasure that. Now, when Fran, believe it or not, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open you up here, sorry. When she gives the most dramatic word, 
she's come away and I'll think, whoa. And, every, and you know, like, I'm, I'm really moved because I knew that wasn't from Fran. And, she'll, and, she, and I could tell she'll have this look on her face that will say, I don't know, was that from the Lord, you know, or was that just me? And I, and I, I, just, I just, honey, that was amazing. Thank you for that gift. Thank you for being brave and using that gift. And I can, every, every time, every time, um, I often, every time the conversation comes up, and when we're doing ministry together, she'll say what she said before. She feels a little bit intimidated because I'm all over a ministry situation. And uh, she'll say, well, what am I going to do? And I say, honey, what I'm doing is nothing unless you, if, if you can hear a word from the Lord, and um, that's, that's, sometimes I put too much pressure on her, in order to, in order to uh, encourage her with a gift. But I do say, I need that gift. And it's not just building Fran up. It's, it's worshipping God. What were we doing this morning when we're worshipping God is we're praising and thanking Jesus in our hearts for what he's done for us. When we honour someone, when we turn to Daniel and say, Daniel, thank you for your love and fidelity. Thank you for the Fernandez family. What a beautiful family you've given us. Their, their fidelity, their love, their serenity. They never seem to get cranky like I get cranky. <laughs> um, this is a gift of God. They bring joy. They bring joy, and I thank you, Lord, because you remind, Holy Spirit reminds me of joy when I see them. So when you're working closely with people in, in music ministry or wherever, be quick to um, look at the gifts and affirm. Okay, the next one is being about being complimentary. Next one, Nick? Yeah. Yeah, so complimentary. So we're all very different, and... In the body, we're meant to complement one another. And as it says in Scripture, again in Corinthians, there are many parts but one body. Okay, so we're meant to be different. So one half of the heart is different to the other half of the heart. And on their own, they look a really odd shape, but put them together and they become the heart. Um, for couples, sometimes I've heard couples say, we're just so different. You know, how can we work together? We're just so different. And we called it the odd couple effect. Okay, but you should actually, if you see a lot of difference, you should say, praise God, because there's more of a span of giftedness that you can bring to whatever situation you're in. If you both were really the same, then you'd only have a limited range which you could work in. But where you're really different, I think that's why God's put Kel and I in a lot of different situations to minister to a lot of different people, is we're really, really different. Like even just in our careers, Kel's come from the whole humanities, social work background, and I've come from the whole accounting business background. You know, just totally different. Our outlooks on life when we first met were really different. Our family backgrounds, Lebanese, six kids, Aussie, Australian, two-kid family, really different. The ways our parents did everything, Christmases, Easter's, everything was really different. So no matter who the Lord brings to us, one of us can connect quite often just in, on, on a, on, in a human way. But spiritually, we're very different. But great, praise God. More of a range of gifts that we can bring to whatever situation we're in. Yeah, like um, with the financial thing and the social work thing, that work really that works really well. It did in the past when I was the elder of um, Sydney South. Um, I, I, I didn't, and I still probably don't have an intuition to where people are at. Fran will say, oh, how was, um, I'll give Selena and uh, pick on, how was so-and-so when they came out? Oh, how do you think they were? They looked great, you know. Atef looked fantastic. He's on fire and why, honey? And she, oh, no, I sense there's a deep grief there or something, you know, or something. She'd see believe, beneath. She had this intuition or she could, someone's alone at Christmas. And I, and I would gloss over, I would see the big picture thing and not see the individual people in the community. Without Fran, I wouldn't see the people. Without me, she doesn't see the big picture. Sometimes we need the big picture. So those kind of giftedness, because we're really different, you get a bit of a total package, which takes us to the next um, slide. Could you uh, take us on? Thanks. Thanks, Nick. Oh. Oh, is it? Oh. Oh, no. That's it? Yeah, yeah. Is yep. it? Yep. All right. So, um, <laughs> Fran's more ordered than I am. <laughs> yeah. 
as you could tell. She's got... <laughs> I'm so, I can be all over the shop and just go with the heart, but Fran's quite... Um, keeps me in line. So, um, what do you see when you, when you look up at a couple? Hopefully, when, we're, when they're ministering together, and this could be a, a couple like us, what do you see? And I'm hoping you can see Christ. You can see through our humanity, and you can see Christ, not just Christ in Kelvin, Christ in Fran, but in a sacramental sense. You, you can see a living, breathing, you know, alive Jesus looking back at you, a live entity, an intelligent, loving spirit of God. You know, and hopefully when you look at any, any tight, small group, knitted people, you will see that intimacy, with Jesus, but Jesus looking back, like an icon. You know, they say about an icon, you just don't look and adore Jesus in the icon, but Jesus looks back to you. He's alive and well. So you look around, and, and what, what do you see when you see couples like the Byrons, like Andrew and Bernadette? You know, when you, when you see them, they're, they're a unit. You can't go through... And look at this together. Well, if you haven't been through the eye before us, otherwise you get, you get the wrong kind of connectedness. And if, and if you haven't honoured each other's gifts and recognised them and understand that you're a complement. So this stage comes after the other ones. And I, I see Jesus when I look at you two in, in, his, uh, in his working clothes, in his workshop at Nazareth. And there's sawdust everywhere. And there's tools everywhere. And there are half-finished projects happening everywhere. Some completed ones, but mostly he's working really hard and there's a lot of sweat coming down. There's, there's a, I can see a rustic beard, a rustic beard and sweat running down. But you know what I also get about you too is that uh, he stops. When you, when you walk into his workshop, Jesus stops everything and he gives you full attention. And that's what I s see in you. And when you, when you give that full attention, I see this ten, the tenderness and the love in Jesus' heart that goes, uh, it's in co almost in contrast to that rustic, tough exterior. He's got this tender love. And your kids are the first ones that experiencing this because that's your first ministry. But whenever you're together, that's what we get, yeah? That's the icon of Jesus that we get. And that's a blessing for us. Can I, can I just come back to you? We cannot get this. Couples cannot be unbound, that Lazarus bandage, unless we do it for them. I'm, I doubt you guys could have seen that vision that I had of you um, by yourselves, sitting down, working it out. Um, does it come from the prophetic? Does it come from knowing you? Probably a bit of both. But you know what? It comes from community life. We know each other and we're living in the spirit. Why can't there be a partnership where we impart and we, 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 weren't good at, we weren't good at this in the early days of community. We were not good at it. Um, the first time we were affirmed as a couple was uh, how many years ago? Four, five years ago. We we're on a victorious ministry through Christ school. as an uh, interdenominational group of Christians that do inner healing and it's what we're involved with in, in um, training people for ministry. And at the, on the last day, in the blessing service, they got us together and they put our hands together and, and, the, and the leaders of the weekend prayed over us and blessed us with oil. They prophesied over us and they blessed us with words of impartation about us as a couple. And suddenly, for the, and, and everyone, the whole, the whole school, focused on us as a couple. Now, I already had a sense, when, even when I was the elder and when Colin... In the, uh, when I was a young man and I, um, he blessed me with oil up the front. I was alone. Fran wasn't. He blessed me with oil. I'm not taking anything away from the sacred. That was sacred for me. He poured oil over my head and, and anointed me as an elder. And, and, but during the practical side of things, leading the, in Sydney South, the youth mission team and, and the community, I always did with Fran. I always saw Fran as partnering me in that work. But the first time we were recognised before God by a community was by Protestant Christians. But we've been getting better at that and I've noticed we're getting better at affirming couples, praying over them together 
and, and imparting a blessing. Because we can't, I don't know what we look like to you now, only you can see that. You can see Jesus. Okay, and I'm not after affirmation here. I'm just after Jesus. That's all we're all after. Wherever we can find Jesus, let's see it. If you see in the music ministry and you see them so you click together and united and you say, wow, there was one face of Christ or one e emphasis of the Holy Spirit, say it to them, yeah? Um, I just, just on the back of that, I just, um, what I've taken to doing, particularly in Sydney South, if I know that one of a couple or the couple together are going to be doing a ministry, we do try and pray over them as a couple and as Kel said, get an impartation um, a spiritual impartation upon them. Um, our daughter Jess and Chris recently were doing um, Theology of the Body series. They were presenting that to a number of single people. And I had an overwhelming sense, just praying for them, I had an overwhelming sense that their marriage would come under attack or they'd come under attack um, while they were doing this Theology of the Body series. So in community we got them up the front and um, we actually prayed protection over them. And interestingly, some really tough stuff happened for them in the following weeks. Um, and not by the participants, the, the program went really well and there was a lot of blessing, but there was some really tough stuff happened to them. So, you know, married couples, we know mar marriages are under assault in this country. And so every opportunity in community, we need to um, pray blessing over married couples and send them forth as a couple with, um, yeah, just with the community blessing. Um, then, so the next one is having fun with the Holy Spirit. So, can we go to the next one? Yeah, so this is uh, Jesus sending out um, his disciples in pairs. And if you can't see, they are smiling. And I was, yeah. showing, I was showing someone this slide the other day and they said, that doesn't really look like it's having fun with the Holy Spirit. And I said, but I said, you forget, they're being told they can go out and walk on scorpions and snakes and they're not going to be harmed. Like, you know, to... Be aware of the power when we're sent out, the power that, of the Holy Spirit that we have with us. And we, we have actually experienced a lot of fun. When you get to know the Holy Spirit, he's really fun. He's fun, he's exciting, he surprises. And one of our most favourite times every year is going on summer school. And for those who have, who have been, will know that Kel and I are often up there to the last ones to stop praying with people at the end of the night. We just love praying with young people because young people are so open and the Holy Spirit, you see the um, Holy Spirit move in such amazing ways. It just rejuvenates your faith. It rejuvenates, you know, you get really excited to see what he's doing. And you're seeing these young people, you know, literally his lives turn around through this through this prayer ministry um so we just love um having fun with the holy spirit expecting the unexpected um and seeing miracles happen seeing healings and um seeing all sorts of surprises it's actually a really momentous occasion when you see someone commit their life to god for the first time and be baptized in the holy spirit you're actually seeing a new life born in the christian world and it makes you stand in wonder and awe at our God, at our amazing God, who never, ever takes his eyes off us, who is always calling us to himself. Even when we're lost, he's calling us back to himself. And the, um, just a side benefit to doing ministry and having fun with the Holy Spirit is that we've ministered to many, many people over the years and we've um, develop some very deep bonds with people and sometimes we won't see them for three four five years but when we see them you know it's a big hug and embrace and you know that you have a deep connection that you've only had through the holy spirit Next one, please. who's in charge can everyone read that time you told your wife who's boss says the therapist he says i did i said you're the boss <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny that's cute <laughs> but you know um there's a pre uh, aussie, the aussie mentality if you go down the hardware and say i'll buy this but i just got to check with the boss first everyone knows he's talking about his wife you know the boss the boss is the wife it's aussie culture um, in the early days of the uh, community, we taught, and I taught um, 
very strongly myself about the importance of headship in marriage um, and the role of the man in marriage, trying to get that mystical dimension of Jesus' uh, love for the, his bride, the church, echoed in a man's love for his wife. But like anything, you can, over, you can overcook a teaching and, and make it spread into all, all dimensions of life and ignore other truths in the scripture and get into trouble. So let me put it this way. A man can receive um, his masculinity from another man. He can't receive it from a woman. A man can't receive, a boy can't receive his gift of masculinity, of who he is as a man, from a woman. doesn't matter how saintly his mother is or his sisters are or his wife is. No, that's based on years of my researching this social, psychological research in, in manhood studies. Okay, but that's where it stops. That's, that's all he cannot receive from her. Everything else is up for grabs. Praise God. He can receive her humour, her prophetic giftings, her inspiration, her leadership. Yes, her leadership. Um, she can lead him into a deeper intimacy with Christ. Not the foundational stuff, but she can help attune him. Um, she can lead him in ministry and he can be in so inspired by her. Um, if he doesn't see that, he misses out big time. She misses out because she's deprived of being able to serve him and countless other people. The, the sheep that Jesus said, Peter, go and feed my lambs, miss out on that full sacramental charism that that couple brings. Um, I, I'm emphasising this probably because of myself. My testimony is that I was the last one, I think, in community to learn this truth in our marriage. In the early days of my marriage, I could not, and I'm, I'm almost, almost ashamed to say it, I could not receive from Fran, spiritually. Um, I loved her, but my growth as a man ha and as a, as a son of God had to be under men like Colin Sutton, uh, Julian Porteous, um, and my brothers like Reg Firth and Costandi, um, yeah, my sharing group brothers. That's where I was inspired and where I grew, and I saw it as my role to come back and to serve friend. So when I, dry, I got, started getting burnt out with some of those and I started getting tired, I, I, couldn't, I still couldn't receive from friend. And as many of you know, I take some years out because I couldn't function. And you see, during those years, God humbled me. And I'm speaking the truth here to you so that no one else has to go through what, what I went through. Learn it earlier. You can, you can and you should receive from everyone. It's about giftedness, not about gender. So the question, who's in charge? Who? Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. And the Holy Spirit. What's the, the Holy Father say in the church says, evangelization and ministry is the work of Jesus and the Holy Spirit we, in which we partake. So sometimes friend will lead forward and I'll, and I'll sit by and I'll follow in her wake. Other times I'll push forward and she'll follow in my wake. It's wherever the Lord is. Um, I have in a complementarity in terms of my understanding of headship, I provide a strength for Fran. Um, and a protectiveness so that her gifts, she can come into full flower. I learned that from Joe Chercob. He was telling me, Joe Chercob from Servants, and Julie, they were both telling me, Julie was saying, I, she's got an amazing prophetic gift. Um, she said, I cannot function with my gift without Joe standing around me and protecting me and being that sort of source of strength and that rock behind me. But ultimately, I'm if Fran shines, I'm not threatened at all. I'm really proud of her. And I, and I get elated and I'm so excited. So men, we, we, uh, and, and, and at the moment we've got women in leadership. Praise we've crossed so many barriers. Um, and we're going to keep finding those um, balance. But not just leaving women out there, but men getting behind them and saying, I'm behind you. You don't even have to be their husband. You don't have to be Fiona's husband to do that. Or Nikki's, you know. Um, you, I'm behind you. I'm with you. And I'm praying for you and I've got your back. Okay, that's a masculine trait to be used for women to, so their gifts can shine. 
The reverse is true, but we're different and we're unique and, we, and women support men in another way. All right. Okay, our next point is about balance. And we all know in scripture that Jesus regularly, it says he pulled away for a time to pray or Jesus took the disciples to a quiet place. We all need a balance between giving out and giving in. All families and most importantly all marriages need intimate times when the doors are shut. This allows for recuperation, growth, to be reinvigorated so that over long periods of time that you don't burn out. You do not want to get to the end of your life and realise that your family has paid a bigger price than what you ever imagined. About 15 years ago, Kel and I were on a summer school where there was a number of young people who had come from another community and were doing night ministry session. And one after the other, they were coming up and asking for prayers of healing. And these young people had said to us, a number of them had said to us how their parents had been so busy doing a whole lot of, lots of ministry and going out all sorts of places that they had missed things like their birthdays, their school graduations, um, just important events in their, you know, when they were doing the HSC, not being around for them when there was important events in their life. And I really thank God at the end of the night, I said to Kelly, I really feel like the Holy Spirit has given us these young people because at that stage our kids were about, uh, well, our oldest is now 30, so at that stage she was probably 15, 13, 11, like just at the beginning, at early teenage years to mid-teenage years. And I just remember standing back and thinking, how many times have we not give, been in the wrong place? And out of enthusiasm for God, like out of a, a, a good motive, like wanting to do things for the Lord and wanting to serve and all that, but again, um, not having the right balance. And it comes back to finding you, having your relationship with God and listening to God and making sure that you realise that your first, if you're married, our first calling is to our own children. As Quentin Bryce has very famously once said for, to a group of women, she said, you can have it all, but you can't have it all at the same time. And I know that that's been repeated a number of times, and I just thought that was such, you know, this was, Quentin Bryce was, a, I think, a mother of five and a grandmother of about 18 and became Governor General. But she recognised that there was a time for her to be a mother at home. And it can, you can sometimes think, oh, it's really boring, you know, cooking dinner for the umpteenth time and hanging the washing and, you know, changing. I, I think I did, you know, five years straight of um, nappy changing and putting nappies on the line. But I came to realise that as I was hanging nappies on the line, it was a perfect time to look up into the heavens and give praise to God. And that is as special a place as it is being out laying my hands over someone and ministering to someone, you know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So it's about being in the right place where God wants you. But as married people, we have to be particularly careful we keep that balance in our life. Um, there will be times to be called out and to do amazing and ridiculous things, but there'll be also times very much to, to pull back. Thanks. Um, I can't remember now why we're showing these pictures. Oh, it's just family. <laughs> That's our family. Uh, and uh, at our da um, daughter's wedding. I think it's about balance. It's our children. Oh, yeah, I know. Um, oh, and there was a photo of Fran and I at a coffee shop uh, looking content. That's one of my favourite pictures of Fran. I don't know if you can see it. She looks so content and happy, like the whole world could stop and she's just, everything's so happy because she's got a coffee and a cake. It's a cup of tea. It's a cup of tea and a cake, that's right. You know, just, that's all. It, it's, you've got to have those moments where you just stop. The world can stop. And Jesus is with us. Jesus, is, Jesus was right there with us, having, you know, enjoying just that stop time. Um, but the other thing about family, um, I was picking up on what Steve uh, Tui was saying last night about his vision for Australia, is that we raise up saints, like raise up Mary McKillops, and, or someone, or Cardinal was saying that this is his vision from the ecclesi ecclesial movements like ours. And what a great joy if, if through our ministry together we raise up children who become saints of tomorrow. They lead the church into the new tomorrow. You know, I look at the children now, and I, I like with the Bowser children in our, in our area, and I think, 
wow, there's like a little Emmanuel, you know. He's a little saint. He's preaching and converting kids in his class or he's only in primary school. And I, I want to have... I want to have a part of that. But his parents are the ones, that's their ministry. You know, so parents, this is how we evangelize the nation. We raise up saints. Not all of them are going to be saints. <laughs> and not all in the way we think, because, you know, we, we can't see the fruit. But we just do the work. Okay, so last one. I know we're running out of time. Last one. Thank you. It's following the anointing. Um, the Holy Spirit. This is a conference, of course, being surprised by the Holy Spirit. And we've given nice, ordered, you know, step by step. If you follow Kel and Fran steps, one, two, three. <laughs> then you can get to four, five, six, and you can graduate. Yay. <laughs> no. <laughs> Holy Spirit comes and then it all seems to go out the window. Here we go, oh, no. It's all, what, what's going on? But you think, this pulls in my heart. I don't understand it, but I feel called. Honey, I feel called. I need to leave work and start my own consultancy. Well, that's not how I started it, but it was, I felt Lord prompting me. And uh, Fran had to listen to my story. Why would I leave a comfortable government job been for 24 years uh, with all the benefits at, at my age and state of life and start my own business? It just didn't make sense. <laughs> but Fran listened and she was very patient. I think what you've got to do is listen to each other at those moments because since I've and with friend, only with friend's support. And she said, I think the Lord's in this. Did I move forward? It was big and I would not have attempted it without her support or her belief that Lord, the Lord was in it because it would have affected her. Uh, and that's a big example, but it can happen in little examples. If we test, our, test your vision out, like sometimes your partner can feel like a wet blanket to you. You're just slowing me down. We've got to do what God wants, you know. And it can be unsettling for you because... You're, you, you feel disconnected, you're relying on this stability and all of a sudden the status quo is blown out of the water and um, I don't know what to do. Or do I obey Christ or do I obey my partner? It can be literally like that. And for, and for, and for your partner it can be, what's going on? You, you haven't really heard me yet. You haven't fed this to me yet. You seem to be going off on your own. So communic talk, discern, to be patient because the Holy Spirit will use that tension as a dynamic tension to purify and if it's a right ministry, you'll be so good at it. You'll be so, you'll be so ready for it when it happens. Your heart will be purified but you'll also have the backing of your team behind you. You go too quickly ahead and you'll be a target for the enemy. Um, friends came to me with a vision of supporting Chris Ryan, uh, Father Chris Ryan, when it comes to our parish, this was a few years, a few years ago she shared this, in um, starting up some training programs for ministry leaders, and they're still working on that. But initially I thought, oh, that's different, but wait a minute, that's your gifting in adult education, uh, and, and I love the MGLs. <laughs> and so for me it was fairly quick. There wasn't a lot of struggle. I thought, I'll stay in my job with government and I'll support you so you can, if you have to leave work, so when my thing came up to quit work, it was a test for Fran because would I get money as a consultant, see? Uh, so we're, we're operating on a wing, wing and a prayer. But it's exciting, yeah? It's a Holy Spirit. If we could work all this out and go by the pattern and the rules, we could be so proud and say, I did it all and I went through all the seven stages. What? Oh, there's eight. Okay. Uh, Yeah, don't mess with Fran. Don't mess with Fran, mate. I've, I've done it before. I've, I've been there. Just... Any questions? Ask. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we've, we've gone over time. What do we do? We have questions or fin okay. wrap it up? Yep. Okay. Questions. Oh, questions. <laughs> okay, oh. we're done with questions. Okay, so we're, we're done. Any questions? <laughs> We're probably not going to have time for sharing uh, groups. Um, Impartation. Oh. Um, it's just um, uh, God's given us, I don't, I'm still getting a grips of it, we've, we've only learned this more recently, 
where you, um, um, what God has given us, we give to you. So the blessings and the faith and the love that we have, we impart to you. So it's, it's imparting God's goodness, but there's something, there's something more in it. Like we're incarnation, God, Christ is incarnational, so we as a, we as a community put, uh, expressing our love and trust in you and our affirmation of you through this prayer. So it's a little bit of a mingling of prophetic prayer and, and praying a blessing of God from heaven to you with us as a community agreeing with that and saying, Lord, we hold this couple to you. And oh, Sorry, that's, that's scrambled eggs. That's not really, that didn't adequately answer it. I'll, I'll find out that's a good question and I'll research it more and get back to you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, thanks, mate. Yes, best, best uncle. Thank you. I heard. All right. Well, we might slip our blessings as well. Yeah. Yeah. I love the sign of the cross. Can we start with that? Can we say a blessing? Okay. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to you, Lord God. Glory to you, Lord. Praise to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise to you, Lord God. Praise to Jesus. Glory to you, Lord God. So, Father, we thank you for giving us Jesus, who only did what he saw you doing. So, what are you doing now among us? Can you show us how your Holy Spirit is falling on each of us now? Holy Spirit, what are you saying to us? What image, picture of our giftedness and our ministry are you telling us? What are you saying about me? What lie have I believed about myself or about you? What un... What un What's something unworthy that has bound me in chains that now I want to release to you? Show me, Lord, and I'll release it and I'll let go of it. Any old attitudes, anything selfish, anything prideful. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Holy Spirit, come and refresh yourself upon us now and help us to ponder the great works you've done in us and what you want to do in us and through our relations with each other, through our communion with each other, particularly with those really close to us, our partners, our spouses, those we live with, those we're in ministry with. <coughs> Holy Spirit, would you refresh in us and give me words to speak over and bless my brothers and sisters. Give me your love. I cannot love your love without you in my heart. I just have um, a sense that the Lord would ask, are we thirsty? Are you thirsty for my gifts? Are you thirsty for more of my Holy Spirit? Because the Lord would say, if you are thirsty, I will give. If you are thirsty, I will give. And if we're not thirsty, we need to look at why we're not thirsty. What have we got in our lives that are fulfilling us in place of God? 
because the Lord's desire is for us to be truly thirsty, crying out and wanting more and more and more of his Holy Spirit. So Lord, we just hold to you those things, anything we can think of that is satisfying us in the place of you. And we say sorry, Lord. And we let go of those things now. In your name, Jesus, we let go of those. And we look deep in our hearts and see the true thirst we have for you and for your Holy Spirit and to have more and more. And we just ask, Lord, that you'd come to that place and that you would give. Come, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and it shall be forever. Amen. 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 Thank you. Love you guys.